Ah, don't you love it when you record a dice and you'll have to do it all again. So, 12900 versus 12900K. What is the actual difference to you as a creator? One can be up to $65 or something like that, cheaper than the other one, but on paper they look very, very similar. What's the performance difference? Let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Firstly, looking at the specs on the paper, we can see that the 12900 and the K version both have 16 cores and 24 threads. The max turbo frequency on the P core is 100 megahertz higher on the 12900K at 5.2 gigahertz. And on the E cores or efficiency cores, it's the same thing, 100 megahertz higher at 3.9 gigahertz. The base frequency is 2.4 gigahertz on the 12900, but 3.2 gigahertz on the 12900K. The E cores on the 12900 are running much lower as well at 1.8 gigahertz, and 2.4 gigahertz on the 12900K. Both of them have the same amount of cache and the base power DDP is 65 watts on the 12900 and 125 watts on the 12900K. Interestingly, the turbo power or the max power pulled from the socket is 241 watts from the K version, but 202 watts from the non-K version. And looking at the price right now, at the time of making the video, the 12900 can be purchased roughly around 520, depending on the shop you're buying this from. And the 12900K is $599. So then my test bench setup is the ASUS Z690 Pro Art build. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend you check it out. The motherboard we use for the test bench setup is ASUS Z690 Creator Wi-Fi Pro Art motherboard. We're using 64 gigabytes bytes of Kingston Fury Beast the DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz. The cooler is Fantex Glacier 1 360 millimeter AIO and the GPU is RTX 3090 TUF from ASUS. It's all in a Fantex P600S case and we're using a 1200 watt ROG Thor power supply to put juice on all of our components. When looking at the power consumption, that's the interesting thing here now about those two chips, which is very similar to the 12700 and 12700K video. If you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend you check that out as well if you're wondering what's the performance difference on those chips. But the 12900 pulls more power at full utilization at 234 watts and the 12900K is 221 watts. So about 5% less or 15 watts or something like that, less on the 12900K, while achieving roughly about the same scores but the 12900k is still faster in cinebench r23 the single core score is 1.3 percent faster on the k version and 3.95 percent faster on the k version in Geekbench 5, the single core score is 0.1% and multi core score 0.06% faster on the K chip. So they're basically the same on Geekbench 5, but Geekbench 5 doesn't actually count the threads on the CPU, just uses the cores. So we're losing out a little bit on that benchmark. When moving on to Blender, the K version is 3.99% faster in the monster scene and 0.7% faster in the junk shop scene and 4.4% faster in the classroom scene. Moving on to Photoshop, the K version is 11.6% faster compared to the 12900, which is very interesting. That's like the biggest difference I can see between those two and kind of makes me wonder what's going on in here, Photoshop. But according to the benchmarks that I've run, the K version is overall 11.6% faster. In Lightroom Classic, the overall score is 0.6% faster on the K chip. So in class Lightroom Classic, I don't really see the performance difference between those two chips. In Premiere Pro, the K chip didn't manage to complete the benchmark with the XMP enabled. So we had to drop the XMP you know, off at 4000 megahertz and the 12900 was running 4800 megahertz. Then looking at the scores, the 12900K is still faster, about 0.5%. But knowing these results now, just know that when you're running faster RAM on the 12900K or match the RAM speeds on both of these, the 12900K will be even faster than the 12900. So the performance difference will be bigger. In After Effects, 
The 12900K is 4% faster in overall score, but about 24.3% faster on the tracking score, which is just crazy. I'm not sure why is that so. Is it the single core performance? Is it the efficiency core performance and so on? But in general, it's about 5, 4 5% faster on the K-chip in After Effects. In DaVinci Resolve, looking at the scores here, the 12900K is 4.5%. 4% faster in the extended score and about 1.3% faster in the standard overall score. Interestingly, when looking at the 8K media score, the K version is 18.6% faster, which is quite a big of a leap over the 12900. But at the same time, in Fusion score, we're losing 1.8%, something like that, to the 12900. Moving on to V-Ray, the 12900K is 1.97%, pretty much 2% faster than the 12900. So in general, overall then, is the 12900K much faster than the 12900? Not really. When looking like overall, generally, the 12900K is a little bit faster. It's a better chip, better bend, pulling less power and achieving higher scores than the 12900. The 12900 is basically a little bit of a bend version of this 12900K chip, where the efficiency cores can't just run as high and won't boost as high and so on but still very good performer. And I'd say if you get it for about 80 or more than $70, cheaper than the 12900K, then the 12900 really starts to look very, very appealing. But if you're running this on your like big PC, whether B660 board or Z690 board, then this is going to pull more power than the 12900K. And you're not going to be able to use the included cooler that comes with the 12900. Shoot that out of the window. This is no good for cooling this 12900K. It's only good if you let it run with its like uh, factory rated settings, like 65 TDP, where it just boosts to 202 watts power and then pulls down after a few seconds, you know, 10 or whatever limit, and then goes down to 65 watt TDP. Like it happens on the Nook 12 Extreme. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check that out because that 12900 is actually from that Nook and that's where it actually is, like small form factor PCs or something like that, or where it's pre-built PC, you just let it run at 65 watts. But if you want it for a test up, the power is gonna be much, much higher, as you can see over here. So then, is it worth it over the other? I'm gonna leave that question up to you, depending on your situation and what's the difference in the shop, because if they are the same price, obviously go with the K chip. The both of them have the iGPU inside, so you're not gonna lose out any of uh, you know that if you're a video editor. But I'm curious, like, how much difference is there in the price in your current location? location location wherever you're located let me know what's the price difference between these two cpus i'm very interested to find out let me know in the comment section below if you want to pick both of these up i'm going to leave the link in the description below and it's going to be a smart link so if you want to get a good deal good price then it's going to give you like a few sh shop options like where to you buy this so i highly recommend you check out all the different shops so that you get the best price for these cpus when making your pc build thanks guys for watching likes if you enjoyed this video it actually helps subs if you like to see more and i'll see you next time Bye bye